This week's Grandmaster is the Light Blade. Hi, my name is Fallout. Please subscribe to my channel. We're almost at half a million subs. Kind of cool. Anyway, I played Light Blade back during the first week of Grandmasters going live because you're able to play different Grandmasters if your goal is to guild the Conqueror title, which I did. I can say with pretty full confidence that Light Blade might be the hardest Grandmaster to ever exist in D2. Today, I'm going to do what I can to help you beat it with as little headache as possible. If you only want to watch a full run through of the GM, feel free to check the link down in the pinned comment. I will be uploading a full no comms run up on my Facebook channel. Yeah, go ahead and giggle, by the way. I have a Facebook channel, so be sure to tell your 59-year-old cat lady Aunt Karen to go check out the page if she has a minute and wants more dank content. Okay, we're gonna do the video like so. If you want timestamps to jump to a particular section, here you go. First, we're gonna talk about why Light Blade is really hard and what types of enemies to expect. Next, we're gonna talk about what loadouts I think do best in the light blade and what you and your homies should bring for an easier time. And finally, we will end with kind of a walkthrough. I'll tell you what the game plan is for each and every area of the encounter and shortcuts that can make your life easier. Okay, part one, what to expect. A light blade grandmaster has both arc and solar shields. You got hive knights with arc and you got hive wizards with solar. You probably won't have a very difficult time with either though. Champion wise, light blade features barrier champs and unstoppable. The unstoppable champions are a joke, and there's a very small number of them. You'll very likely have no problem with them at all. The barrier champs, however, range from annoying to devastating. Several will appear during the already difficult boss fight. One thing your team will have to work on is making sure that when the barrier champs pop up during the boss fight, you have a game plan to either A, immediately nuke them, or B, play crazy amounts of defense with your loadouts, i.e. bubble, stasis turret, whatever, to delay them while you pick them apart. TLDR, the barrier champs can be very rough in the light blade. The next thing you're going to want to take note of are the loosened hive. Those things are brutal in the light blade GM, and if you don't give them enough respect, they're going to ruin your run. Their shield throw attack can and will one shot you. Their suppression grenade throw can and will one shot you. The worst part though is that you can't just kill them from far away like you can do with other champions. You got to be prepared to run in and mush their ghost or they'll come back and you really don't want that happening. There will be multiple Lucent Hive Bros popping in during the boss fight room. Be prepared to deal with them one way or another or you will wipe. Oh, and uh, because Lucent Hive are so awful, killing one completely will give you three extra team revives instead of the usual one. Final thing to be careful of is the boss. Lightblade features an acute arc burn, meaning while you'll be able to deal an extra 25% damage with anything arc, you will also also take an extra 50% incoming arc damage. The boss's main ranged attack is a projectile arc bombardment, and if you're out in the open when it hits you, you are literally going to turn into a human piece of toast. Be prepared to do a lot of hit and running. Don't be a hero. If the boss is targeting you with his ranged arc attack, wait it out and don't ego challenge. Most people are going to die in the boss room right at the beginning anyway because they are ego challenging. Alright, part two, team build crafting. Starting with hunters. It should come as no surprise that my hunter recommendation is, drum roll please, thank you, Camo Abuse, which is always great in Grandmasters, but extra great in Lightblade for two reasons. Reason number one, we'll touch on it shortly, but there's pretty much two encounters that you can flat out skip entirely by abusing the Camo Hunter while still getting Platinum rank at the end. Reason number two is that again, the boss fight is wild. People can and will die, and having a shifty hunter being able to go camo and then revive people, huge. I beat Lightblade using Omni Oculus on my hunter, but I'm sure that Sixth Coyote would work fine too. I've seen some videos out there, by the way, of hunters taking advantage of the renewal grasp. Very ballsy play, but if you're comfortable with that, sure, give it a whirl. I'm going to hard recommend at least one camo hunter on the team, but of course you can beat it without one at all. Warlocks, hard recommendation on the Bleak Watcher turret abuse for the final boss room. I know a lot of people out there rock Osmio for the ability to throw two turrets, but my buddy Mudkip is leaning hard into Eye of Another World lately, and honestly, I think that probably is the better play. Osmio can't take advantage of grenade kickstart unless you throw out both turrets at the same time, and it also requires you to use cold snap. With Eye of Another World, your warlock can use glacier grenades instead, which can be handy for defense in a pinch, especially with Whisper of Chains. Also, by shooting and destroying your glacier nades, you can take advantage of Whisper of Shards and get extra grenade regen. Either way, be sure to put on bomber onto your class armor to ensure that when you pop your rift, you get more grenade energy back immediately for more turret throwing. 
I get this comment a disturbing amount of times on my Grandmaster videos, but yeah, I'm fully aware that Freezing Champions very often up how they take damage. In Lightblade, it is 1000% worth it in the boss room though, because even if I had to theoretically deal double damage on a champion because they were frozen, completely immobilizing one while you deal with the other is great. Believe me, the turrets completely tripping up the enemies, even champions, is wonderful, especially when you're in a tiny nightmare room like the Lightblade boss room, and I'm not gonna stop doing it anytime soon. You could probably also rock Chaos Reach Warlock. I haven't yet, but Chaos Reach with an extra 25% damage output from the acute arc burn would probably make very short work of the barrier champs and loosened hive in the boss room. Titans, you have to decide if you want to go defense or offense. Defense titans should go either banner shield or bubble. Banner shield is tempting, and I don't think I saved a clip of this anywhere, but one time when running Lightblade, a loosened hive threw a void shield through our titan's banner shield, and it ended up getting a double kill. Either way, defensive titans, try and save your super for reviving dead teammates in the boss room or for dealing with champions and or loosened hive. Offense titans, falling star thunder crash does a lot of damage out here with the acute arc burn. If you get a bit of damage on a loosened hive or champ, you can fly in with thunder crash, polish off the hive, and crush their ghost. Again, the only downside there being you'll have less defensive options on the table, but a little offense in the boss room for champion nuking can be a really good thing. General armor mods, loosened finisher on your artifact is great. You got champions and loosened hive out here in Lightblade, and it'll give you free heavy ammo each and every time if you finish one. At least one person on your team should run it, but if you can, two or all three players would be hella great. Ammo finder mods on your helmet, of course, and ammo scavenger mods on your leg armor, of course. For your chest armor, I'm gonna be real with you guys. I have not done, nor do I know of anyone who has done any real concrete testing about how effective thermoshock plating is in the Lightblade GM. I feel as though stockpiling up on defensive armor options is probably the best play. Then again, it is also possible that no matter how high you stack up on defensive options, the boss may just molly -wop you in one hit with his arc attack either way. Still, I'm going to recommend running double thermoshock, and if you can, put on an artifice chest piece from the GOA dungeon so you can run double thermoshock and concussive dampener all at the same time. For extra protection, consider running the following two armor mods as well. Protective light. I know, it got nerfed and only gives a little bit of protection, but anything that can help you stay alive should be the priority. Obviously, you have to pair that with a way of getting charged with light. Taking charge is usually my go-to. And also, striking light, which the secondary perk allows you to get extra DR against enemies if you're sprinting. For your class armor or for your gauntlets, either double the utility kickstart if you're going to be abusing something like the hunter dodge for repeated camo use, or double bomber if you're a shadebinder warlock taking advantage of your turret. Weapon wise, think two things, range and burst damage. Nine times out of 10 out here, you will be fighting from mid to long range, even in the boss room. For ad clearing, I really enjoyed using the Trinity Ghoul. Remember, you deal 25% extra arc damage and Trinity was great for ad clearing and hitting things hard at long range. It's gonna be borderline mandatory that one or more people bring an RB. Not only does it help deal with all shield types, but it punches very hard and helps nail barrier champions, which again, are going to be a huge thorn in your paw in the boss room. Go to your vault right now or open up dim and see if you are holding onto a tarantula, the old ass arc linear fusion rifle. I don't think it can roll vorpal weapon last time I checked, but that's fine. Just the fact that it deals arc damage, it's going to hit harder than most other linear fusion rifles you may have thanks to the acute arc burn. I didn't have one, but if you do, that would be a great option for the boss room. Pair that together with RB if you can can to double up on linear finder and scavenger mods. If you don't have a tarantula, you could either pick a different linear that does have vorpal, or you could maybe use an arc rocket launcher like the hothead. You could even go double hothead and one gallerhorn to try and immediately french fry the barrier champions or loosened hive when they pop into the boss room. I think linears might be the more safe option, but arc rockets would work for sure. I was running trinity ghoul in my run, but you could also try bringing an auto loading blinding grenade launcher. Be warned though, Champions and Lucent Hive will not be blinded by those launchers.
adventures. It would mainly be for Acolyte and Thrall blinding. Not ideal, but better than nothing. Wither Horde could also probably work pretty well, but the downside being you would lose out on Arby or G-Horn. You could, in theory, go with Wither Horde, Point of the Stag, and Hothead, provided somebody on your team has one Arby to deal with all the shield types. All right, moving on to part three, aka tips for each encounter. The opening encounter used to be just an annoying time sink, until, that is, I learned that you can literally skip the entire opening fight, including the two barrier champions champions and still get platinum rank at the end of the GM. If you don't believe me, watch the full run I'm uploading up on the Facebook channel. We skip the entire opening encounter, including the champions, and get platinum at the end. Here's how to do that. If you want to be real safe, first damage the big bad boss from far away with hard hitting weapons. After just a touch of damage taken, he will teleport out of the area. If you have a camo hunter on your team, and again, you probably should, send that player forward while invis until they're through to the next area. When they go ahead far enough, all the enemies in the opening area, including the champs, will despawn and you're good to go. Feel free to play out that opening encounter if you want, just do it from long range. But again, you can skip all of it and still get platinum. The next area is going to be rough. You'll be indoors and you'll have to deal with both barrier champs and lucent hive. The champs are annoying, but the real problem are the lucent hive. Champs can be murdered from far away, but lucent hive need to be finished, which requires you being up close. Try to stay up top where you came into that room for as long as you can. Be aware though that after killing a set number of enemies, including trash enemies, the barrier champ, and the first Lucent Hive, another Lucent Hive will spawn in the back where you entered the room on that elevated platform. Be fully prepared to run away back down that hallway and turn it into kind of a battle of attrition. You can lure the Lucent Hive into the entrance of that hallway, kill them, then run in to smush the ghost. Be warned, again, almost every attack from the Lucent Hive can kill you in one shot. Put a lot of respect on that Lucent Hive and do your best to hit them with a lot of damage, then finish them off when they're relatively alone and you're close enough to go get the finish. As mentioned earlier, killing Lucent Hive will give you three revives back because they're that annoying to fight. The next part is the fairy area. Before going up to even ride the fairy, stay down low and kill the two barrier champs who are up top on either side. When it comes time to ride the fairy, the biggest tip I can give you is that you can get off the fairy literally any time that you want. In our full playthrough, we almost never rode the ferry longer than 5 or 10 seconds. We get off almost immediately and just travel via jumping along the wall the whole way through. Way safer and better that way. Eventually, you'll have to kill two more Lucent Hive to get orbs, which you will need to dunk in order to move the ferry further. I actually recommend splitting up a little bit when dealing damage to these two Lucent Hive. If you're all bunched up together on the staircase leading up to them, you're literally begging to get hit with a shield throw attack or a void grenade and then bam, your whole team is dead. Go ahead and deal safe damage from a decent range and take your time. If the Loosen the Hive starts throwing garbage at you, fall back for a minute if you need to. At the end of the ferry ride, again, no need to even ride it all the way. Go on foot, jumping from bridge to bridge, and at the very end, you can just go through a green portal to get back to where the ferry is parked. Thrall are then gonna repeatedly jump onto the ferry. You can just stay back and shoot them from afar. Remember that right when you go through the portal, there's actually a platform up above above you that you can jump up to in order to get a better view of the ferry. Next is the Omega Annoying Swamp Area. To me, this is by far the biggest reason to bring a camo hunter on your team. The easiest way to get through the swamp we found was to have two guardians literally stay back at the very beginning of the swamp while the camo hunter goes through the entire area alone. If you're looking for a recommended route, try to stay going to the right, and it's going to take you a little bit of practice, but for the most part, great strategy that I hard recommend. Be sure to watch Watch out for the annoying moths that go boom in your face, but just keep spamming camo until you get to the end. Despite getting max darkness debuff or whatever that trash is called, you won't die, you'll just become moderately slow. When you get all the way to the end, all the enemies in the swamp will despawn, except the moths, which is kind of weird. Have your fire team now move through the swamp, being sure to avoid or shoot each moth. After killing one unstoppable champion in a cave in the next area, you'll be up on a platform overlooking a big green outdoor area 
area. Stay up on that ledge and kill everything out in the area. That would include shooting the big bad boss until he goes away. If you can, save the unstoppable champion for last. That way you can go down and finish him to generate free heavy ammo if you're rocking Lucent Finisher from your artifact. All right, now you're finally ready to enter the boss room. Be sure to not die on the way down the giant hole and then be ready to play a huge game of keep away. I cannot overstress how overpowered the boss is. He will literally one shot you immediately. The biggest two tips I can give are as follows. One, always be near a pillar or some form of cover in the boss room. That way, when the boss is targeting you, you can stay behind the pillar and hopefully live. I say hopefully because even with that cover, you can still die if you're either too close to the pillar or too close to the wall behind you. Tip number two, if the boss is shooting you, you are not shooting the boss. You understand? Unless you're a PVE god and have soloed a ton of GMs before, follow that rule. Do not ego challenge the boss for minimal chip damage. Wait until he targets a teammate of yours and then peek out to fire. If the boss is shooting at you, you are not shooting at the boss. Other than that, try to keep moving. Remember that multiple times during the boss fight, barrier champions and Lucent Hive will pop in. The first Lucent will appear when you've finished doing one third of the Light Blade's overall health, and they will pop in on the very middle platform. When that Lucent Hive is dead, along with his yellow health bar buddy, two barrier champions will immediately pop in as well. Try to be prepared for that and get your team's big burst damage ready. At the next damage gate, same exact thing. Lucent Hive pops up in the very middle, along with a yellow bar knight. After both of them are dead and a wave of thrall, two more champions will pop in. I know it's going to be really tempting to hit the boss with all your hard hitting ammo right away. Try to save your power ammo and most of your special and your super all for the Lucent Hive and the champions. Believe me, they really are the greater threat and need to be dealt with immediately. Final tip, because the Light Blade will often chase you around the room by jumping from one platform or ledge to another, you can potentially lead him around in a game of Leapfrog. By jumping from one platform to the bottom floor, to the center platform, and back up top again, you can trick the boss into jumping around repeatedly rather than flat out trying to damage you. The goal there being to distract him with jumping while other teammates are shooting and dealing free damage. Be careful careful if you do that though, he can still whip out that long range arc attack at any time. If you're having trouble, and you probably will, again, go watch my full playthrough, link to that down in the video description. If you've beaten Lightblade and want to offer more tips than what I've given here, feel free to leave a comment down below. Good luck, be patient, and save your best stuff for champions in the boss room. You can do it. Subscribe to my channel if you're new, and I appreciate you. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.